Hello and welcome to this lab on how to deploy web logic applications to the cloud. My name is Jan Lehmans and I'll be walking you through a quick introduction of the lab steps that you can execute here. But first of all, let's take a look at the web logic product roadmap. Web logic has embraced the cloud native paradigm running in a Docker container and running on top of a Kubernetes environment. And all the tools and uh, utilities are there to make that possible in a very smooth way. Obviously, we collaborate and cooperate with uh, microservices, uh, potentially using frameworks like Helidon and Coherence. And we leverage all the possible flavors of the Oracle database that are present in the Oracle Cloud. Now, there's an extensive roadmap. The last release, 14.1, uh, has a whole range of new features. And there is a very clear roadmap on the long-term support of older versions, most specifically uh, the 12.2 version that is now having a long-term support uh, uh, version uh, that is valid till 2025. Now, what are we offering on the cloud side? Basically, we are offering you two deployment models to run your web project environments in cloud. First one is using what we call virtual machines, which is a very classic way to deploy your web logic, similar to the way you probably do it on-premise right now. Second option is to run web logic as a containerized uh, uh, application on top of the managed Kubernetes uh, uh, platform that Oracle is offering in its cloud. Both of these flavors can be run in two commercial models, either as what we call bring your own license. So that basically means that you already have licenses that you have been using on premise. Well, you can take those existing licenses and run them now in the cloud. On the other hand, we also offer the option of pay as you go using the concept of universal credits. You basically consume your license on a per hour per OCPU basis, uh, what gives you a lot of uh, flexibility basically in scaling up and scaling down and adjusting your costs to the actual need uh, of your application. WebLogic in the cloud uh, supports multiple versions, 11G, 12C. Uh, we support GRF and non-GRF deployments. Uh, GRF deployments, we will need a database, and that is what we will be doing in this lab. And more specifically, in this lab, we will be using an ATP, an autonomous uh, database. But basically, as I already mentioned, you can basically use any type of database that is available in the Oracle Cloud. Now, how do we get started? First of all, you need a cloud environment. And for that, you can uh, obtain a free tire from Oracle that will give you your personal tenancy. Uh, uh, just go to the link that is provided on uh, the web page, and you will uh, have to fill in some details, and you will, uh, within a few minutes, have access to your personal environment that is perfectly fit to execute this lab. Once that's OK, well, we will go into the actual lab steps. Uh, step one is setting up the environment, creating some keys and, and, and compartments and some security things uh, to prepare. Then uh, actually spinning up the web logic environment itself. Then we'll do some configuration of the load balancer. And finally, we will deploy an ADF application on top of that environment to showcase uh, that this whole uh, setup is working as you are uh, expecting. So let's go into a little bit uh, more detail. What are the prereqs? Well, first of all, we will be creating a compartment, which is kind of like a container that will contain all the resources that you will spin up in this exercise. It's a uh, uh, nice thing uh, to do to isolate your uh, specific workloads in uh, uh, clear uh, chunks of work. Uh, next, we will spin up uh, a autonomous database. And again, that's a very simple operation. We'll simply go to the, uh, to the uh, cloud control plane, uh, uh, enter a very, very few parameters, and your uh, uh, autonomous database is up and running in no time. We will be using that database both as a repository database for the web logic installation itself, as well as the data repository for your ADF application that you will deploy on top of uh, 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 web logic. So we will be creating, as part of this step, a few tables in that uh, uh, database. Uh, we'll create a schema with a few tables that will be leveraged by that ADF application that we will be deploying. 
Next, we need to do some uh, 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 security setup where we will actually be encrypting the passwords that we will be using along this exercise so that you don't have to pass them on in the clear to the various wizards. And for that, we will use the vault, the OCI vault. Uh, so first we'll create a vault instance. Inside that vault, we'll create a encryption key. And then we'll use that key to encrypt three passwords, one for the WebLogic administrator, one for the ATP admin password, and then a third for the actual ADF application schema. And so you can very easily use those uh, uh, keys of those uh, encrypted passwords instead of using the password itself later in the wizard. So in that wizard, uh, of for spinning up web logic, you will specify a, a, a specific configuration whereby we will be using two nodes. We will be using a load balancer and we will be using uh, the ADA, ATP database that we have uh, spun up. Out of the box, all the network configuration will be created. We'll actually choose that option to say, create a new uh, network compartment, network uh, cloud network. Uh, you could use an existing one, but in the context of this demo, it's easier to create a new one. Um, and then everything will be set up for you uh, automatically. We will be making the choice to use public networks just to make access to the environment uh, a little bit easier. In a production grade environment, you would probably use uh, private networks that are not accessible from uh, the outside, at least not just like that. You can uh, you have to go through uh, bastions, etc. But that is making it uh, a little bit too complex for this uh, simple lab. Now, once your RepLogic environment is up and running, we will go into the load balancer configuration. That is step three to make sure that everything is set up in terms of session persistency for supporting the ADF application. We need to do a few changes there. And then finally, the fourth step will go into the WebLogic administration console and deploy the ADF application. And with that, you're true. You uh, successfully created an environment out of nothing, a database, a WebLogic environment, and deployed an application, an ADF application on top of that environment. And so with that, I hope you now uh, uh, clearly see what is uh, the purpose of this lab. Uh, and so thank you for your attention and have fun.